Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Soul Cation Podcast. I am your host, Logan Renee. I'm super excited about this episode because it was triggered because one of the tribe members sit in uh, a statement. I was like, oh, I got to make a series out of this one. This one, this one is really good. So if you have anything that you want to hear on the podcast, all you have to do is email me at logan at loganrenee.com and I'll add it to the show, especially if it's my lane. If it's not my lane, I'll bring in an expert. And if you know any experts that you like, like Logan, you got to get her on the podcast. DM me on Instagram at loganrene.com. I mean, not loganrene.com. That's my website. Or you can just DM me at Logan Renee on Instagram. Um, so we got this from a young lady in Canton. And she said, being a strong friend in a, in a, in a bunch, we are typically the one everyone brings their issues to or tries to solve alone. And we need support from our own circle. We become complacent with being a problem solver that we allow our own problems to remain unresolved, especially unresolved mysteries. So um, she's able to pour into other people, but when she is when she needs a resource or she needs those same people to have her back, it's usually usually not the case. So today's episode is tired of being the, the responsible one, and this is part one. So this episode is for all the strong ones. This is for the ones that feel like you've been ignored, you haven't been heard, you haven't been seen, you don't have anybody fully open up to, you don't even have somebody that you can fully trust to tell all your business to, but there are other people that just always flood you with their business and you're so busy taking care of them, you can't even take care of you. I'm even talking to the older siblings out there because you all carry a lot of weight also. So I'm going to break down a story and then I want to um, move into how we're going to we're gonna heal a little bit for all of the strong ones out there and the responsible ones. So there's a story um, called the prodigal son. And I thought prodigal meant a, a good thing until I looked up the definition, but prodigal means wasteful and reckless, okay? So especially with resources, very wasteful and reckless with resources. So this prodigal son had a rich dad who had coins on coins on coins. And the son goes to his dad and he was like, yo daddy, <laughs> I want my portion. I want my, I want my inheritance now. You know, usually you get the inheritance when the father passes away. He was like, no, I want it now. So his father was like, okay, I'll give it to you. Now he had an older brother. His older brother never asked for his portion, even though his younger brother was about to get it. He just stayed, you know, he stayed in the same city with his, his father. Well, the younger brother gets his portion and he leaves. Excuse me. He leaves the city where he's covered, where he has family, where he has um, um, a good foundation. And he goes off into a land where he just parties and turn up. Everybody knows when you have money and you're on top, everybody's with you. But when you're down in a gutter, like he was about to be, um, he was there by himself. So he ends up squandering all his money to the point where he becomes homeless and he's eating in the place where pigs ate out of, okay? Then the story goes into how he came to himself as he's sitting there eating slop because what they fed the pig with, the pigs with was leftovers from everything, right? Just pure slop. And he realized as he was sitting there eating corn or green beans and mashed potatoes all mashed up probably, um, <laughs> and things that other people had chewed, disgusting, right? He was like, my daddy rich. Like, what am I doing here? Like, I need to go home. <laughs> so he goes home and his father is so happy, so proud that his father throws him a party. So the older brother is like, yo, daddy, like what's good? Like, I've been here. Like, you ain't threw me no party, you know? And his dad was like, well, son, I'm just so happy that, I'm so happy that he's back right? So <laughs> the brother was like, okay, all right. Okay, daddy, I see you. I know I'm clear. Just imagine how you would feel as the old, older sibling. You've been consistent. You've been faithful. You know, you've been there. Now your younger brother comes back. He gets a whole party and it's like, and I get it. We're all supposed to, we're not supposed to do things to get rewards, right? But just imagine how the older, older sibling feel. You know what I'm saying? So for every older sibling out there, for the person that doesn't feel like they're seen or they're acknowledged and they're always giving, 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 I want to say it's okay. I also want to apologize for the burden and the weight that you have felt, okay? 
So the apology is set in stone. I want to apologize if we made it difficult for you because I'm I'm the baby of my family. So I already know how I've treated my older siblings, you know, um, especially if you felt like stress, like you couldn't go on dates or you couldn't have somebody at the house because, you know, if, if you brought somebody, then your, your little brother or your little sister had to tag along with you. Or let's say you wanted to play basketball and your parents can afford for you to play basketball and your sister play tennis and your, you know, other sister do, I don't know, gymnastics. You could, they couldn't pay for all three. So you had to give up your sport because they couldn't, they couldn't pay for it. So all your life, you have been used to sharing. You have been used to giving stuff up. You have been used to having people tag along. You've been used to saying yes. Here's what I want you to know. Here's what I want you to receive on this Soulcation podcast. I want this to rest and to sit in your, car, your, your heart. You deserve somebody to lean on to. You deserve support also. You deserve love back, right? You, do, you are worth somebody checking on you. You are worth receiving somebody... Um, receiving advice from somebody you are worth having somebody you fully trust that you're able to open up to you are more than your money you are more than your tips you are more than your connections you are more than what you could do for other people okay you are more than that you're not just the responsible one you're also gifted you're also talented you're also anointed you're also a developer you're also creative you know you're just not this one pocketed person that your childhood might have placed you in i want you to see yourself as a person that deserves just just as much as you give other people right you don't have to be the person that's taking care of everybody that's falling out drunk or stretched across the floor and you got to you feel like you got to be the mama and pick them up pick them up because that was the role you played in childhood or maybe you didn't have you didn't have any siblings but because you were the only child your parents looked at you like oh this is my perfect child. You can't do anything wrong. What mistakes? Like you couldn't fall. You couldn't fall. You couldn't stumble at all. You had to make every shot. You had to get all good grades. And even in your adulthood, you're trying to live up to the good girl title, right? To the responsible person title. Like this is who I've always been. So for me to, for me to keep this title, I have to show up in this elite attitude as if I can't do no wrong. I can't make a mistake. And that's not true. You get to make mistakes and you get to be forgiven. You deserve forgiveness back. I mean, you deserve forgiveness too. You get to slip up. You get to say the wrong thing. You get to stumble. But you also get to get back up. And if somebody's there to hold your hand, let them. Let them hold your hand. You have to be also in a place to receive help from people, okay? You don't have to plan every function. You don't have to set everything up. You don't have to be the only person that shows up on time. You have permission to leave people. Be like, girl, I'll catch you there at the restaurant. I, I can't, I'm always waiting on you. Like you have permission to say that to people. It is time for you to start looking out for you. And it is not selfish, it's soul care. How can you be the advice giver, the soul connector, the soul connector, and your soul not right? Because you're pouring, 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 giving, 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 giving. The same way you look out for other people, I want you to start looking out for yourself. It doesn't mean cast people aside, throw them away. I'm just saying you matter too. Consider yourself also. You deserve more. You deserve support. And I'm going to ask you to let people support you, to let people hug you back, to let people be a listening ear for you. And here's a, some language that you can adopt. Hey, I love you, but I need you to listen to, I need you to listen to me tonight. I need to be able to tell this to you without interruption. I love you so much, friend, but I need to, I need somewhere I can release my heart to. And if they're your friend, 
they'll be there and they'll listen they'll want to listen but we have to train people how to treat us because if, if we think people just offering good now some people just offer goodness but there are a lot of takers for the takers they shouldn't be in your circle anyway they should not be in your circle if you call them your friend you need to observe the boundaries that you set over your heart that says this is what I allow as a friend in my life, okay? Some people, as uh, Sophia Nelson says in her book, uh, The Woman Code, some people deserve to be on the front row, but it's a lot of people you should be moving back every season. Some people need to be all the way out the door, okay? She says to observe your front row. Everybody should not be that. I, I highly recommend that book, The Woman Code by Sophia Nelson. Baby, it's a lot of people I didn't move out the door. I mean, I didn't move them back so many times, they just out the door automatically. You know what I'm saying? And I haven't missed them because they were for a particular season. Now, your front row, you need to be observing. I think she said every six months, every year, looking at probably, probably every quarter, okay? Looking at your front row, like, who on here that don't need to be? And who about outgrown? And we just outgrown each other. There's still love there. There's still respect there, but they might not need to be on your front row, right? My point is, you get to be happy too. You matter too. You're special also. You're God, God's best idea too. Like there's no respect to a person. There's, there's no seat for you to go sit in and other people get to shine. You can be on stage too. And whatever stage that, that means, it could be as a doctor, as an attorney, as an event planner, you get to have your own lane also. Everything does not have to be shared, period. Everything does not have to be shared. You deserve to be seen, acknowledged, heard, loved too, period. Let me tell y'all my biggest lesson, and I'm going to get on up out of here. Okay. My biggest lesson was from my older sister. Now, I adore my sister, adore her. And when I tell her how much I love her and I respect her, she'd be like, oh, but literally from the bottom of my heart, I will always love this woman, okay? When I say my biggest cheerleader, when I say there's no jealousy, there has always been support. There's always been admiration and there's always been respect. I can't remember me and my sister just like, we've had sister little spats, but to the point where there has been blatant disrespect, that has never happened. That has never happened. Even in, you know, hot conversations, right? So my sister, I called her one time. I was 23, I believe. I was 23. And I always knew my sister was going to have my back. She was always going to, like, bail me out, right, <laughs> out of any situation. So what I would do is spend all my money, honey, like, down to the penny. And then I'll try to find out what I could do with the penny, right? I was like, my sister going to bail me out. So I called her with my same little mopey, sad voice. And I was like, sis, like, oh, my God, like, I don't have no money. Like, can you help me? Like, I'm so hungry. She was like, I'm so sorry I don't have it. I was like, yes, you do. You always got money. <laughs> like, you save. You be saving all the time. So, you got it. And she was like, no, I don't. But I'll talk to you later. Bye. Two things happened for me in that moment. I realized my sister did not want to tell me no, but she knew she had to tell me no. And she, she, like, she said it so fast that she never got the phone that quick. That's why I knew she didn't want to say it, but she knew she needed to say it. And I learned how to spend money. I learned how to save. I learned that I needed an actual budget and to write it down, like what I was spending. It was the biggest lesson of my life. My sister telling me no. Some of you all need to get in a marriage with no. Not to be mean to people, but to learn how to start using it. Because some of you all have always used yes. Your yes is how you feel like you receive love back. And I'm here to tell you that you can, you can receive love from people who are willing to give love even when you tell them no. And if they love you, they'll rock with you even when you tell them no or not right now or uh, let me think about it and I'll, I'll let you know tomorrow. And if your answer is no tomorrow, your answer is no. Lean on your no, just as hard as you lean on your yes. And it's not an in-between thing. 
You know what I'm saying? Even in that moment where you like, let me think about it, let me call you back. If you were leaning on no, stick stick with the no. Don't be wishy-washy with your no. Lean on that no, honey. The same way you lean on that yes. You deserve. You deserve. I'm going to say it again. You deserve support too. You deserve respect too. You deserve somebody to listen to you also. You deserve that back. The same thing you give, be willing to receive that. And how you receive that from people is showing them how to treat you. That's all I'm going to say for today. I love (laughs) y'all. Thanks so much for tuning to the Soulcation podcast. You already know if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and you also share this episode with one of your closest friends, especially, you know, if she's went through this also. If you're listening on the podcast, make sure you rate this episode five stars, leave a comment and email me. Let me know what you all want to hear on this episode and be on the lookout for next week because we're going to do Tired of Being Responsible Part 2, honey. This was just the beginning. I love you all. Talk to you soon.